uh, I, I never really planned or dreamt to be a businessman. I went into business out of frustration, actually. I was a uh, uh, technical director in British Telecom, introduced CellNet at the time, first cellular network here. And uh, I, I really had a hard time at BT. I mean, it's a very difficult organization. And uh, I guess uh, out of frustration at the end, uh, I, 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 I just have to, uh, to leave it. I mean, uh, uh, it's very sad uh, uh, the way BT went, actually. They totally failed to realize the potential of cellular and, uh, at that time. And uh, what, what, what do you do? I mean, if you are a, an executive and uh, you just resign, you become unemployed, you go home and say, I'm, uh, I'm going to take over the dining room and that will be my office. And that's how I started uh, my business. And uh, actually never looked back after then, so thanks to BT, actually. A wonderful company for me. Uh, we had, uh, in, in doing our uh, telecom enterprise in Africa, we really, we had few advantage. Uh, one was the know-how. We knew the networks in and out because we designed networks in Britain and most of European countries, Asia, America, etc. So we were really uh, a top team as far as understanding the technology and its potential. So we had the know-how. Uh, then we had the corporate governance. I managed to recruit a wonderful board, uh, which included people like Sir Jerry Wendt, who just stepped uh, out of Vodafone, who's the chief executive of Vodafone. I have Sir Alan Raj, who's the chief executive of British Telecom. And uh, so we had really a number of uh, tele really very good telecom people. Uh, so we had a wonderful board, we had the governance, we had the know-how. And the third most important element is the market. We saw Africa as a wonderful market potential for us because the image of Africa is bad. Investors are afraid to go to Africa. That's why all these big telecom companies refrain from going to Africa. Licenses were going almost for free. But uh, nobody wanted to do that uh, because they're afraid of Africa. We know there are issues with Africa, but there is a huge gap between perception and reality. And whenever there's a big gap between perception and reality, there's a wonderful business opportunity. And that that's how we made our fortune. Uh, my leadership style, actually, I think is, uh, is an inclusive, an inclusive approach. Uh, it starts from, I really don't know a lot of things, and uh, that's not a problem. Uh, the problem, if you don't raise your hand and say, I don't know, then you'll always remain ignorant, and you're likely to make a lot of decisions. And then I have seen in my career, a lot of my managers fail, because of this arrogance. Uh, they are afraid to raise their hand and say, I don't know when they don't know. Uh, but uh, you need to include people, listen to everybody. But then once a decision made, you lead from the front. Then it's finished, it's done. Then you go ruthlessly and do it. Uh, so, but then you have your people behind you. And uh, you, so we need this clarity. You give people chance to really uh, uh, add their views and inputs, etc. They are in a better situation, better position to make a decision. And once you make a decision, everybody falls in behind because you're given a chance. That is a way really to, to, to uh, uh, really uh, 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 move forward. And I think that that's, that's useful. Openness and decisiveness. Really, the best advice I can really can give if I'm uh, arrogant enough to give an advice to anybody is that please don't lose sight of common sense. Common sense is the most important tool for any business people. Don't get drowned in jargon, slogans and all that, that, that uh, cotton stuff. Uh, common sense. Common sense and never take shortcuts. I think this industry is really have still a lot to go. It's it's changing the world around us. It's changing really the way we're doing business, the way we're communicating, the way we're socializing. And in Africa, for example, I mean it's strange. I mean we, we money transfers by phone. 
is we are leading. We are leading the whole world about money transfer. You don't need now your credit cards, really. You don't need to carry cash. Your mobile phone. I look for it on the mobile phone, carry your passport. You don't need to carry a passport. And you can have the chip inside your, uh, uh, your phone. And uh, I would like the time to see when people are born, they are given a phone number. I think that's more important than, than any other information. Uh, there's a lot yet to come.